Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I will show you how to run a simple calculation using Quantum Espresso, uh, which is the single point DFT calculation of silicon crystal. I have already put the input file here, and let's take a look inside. This is the same input file as, uh, as I have in the slides. Uh, if, you, if you haven't checked that uh, video yet, please, please check it out, uh, where I ex explained everything in detail. And basically, uh, uh, basically, this means that we have a single point calculation uh, where the pseudo potential file is uh, defined here, and the Bravais lattice is FCC lattice, crystal constant is 10.2 Bohr, is around 5 angstrom, and there are two atoms in the unit cell, one type of atom that is silicon, and uh, cut of uh, like cut of kine kinetic energy is 20 Rydberg. And the uh, name of the a of the atom is silicon, and this is the atomic mass. This is the pseudo potential file, which should uh, should be inside this folder, and um, and we have uh, the atomic positions of the two silicon atoms in the unit cell, uh, specified with respect to the crystal constant here, and uh, the k points. Uh, defined in the reciprocal lattice, so it's uh, automatically filled uh, six by six by six uh, points in the in 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 the k space. So basically, this runs a single point uh, calculation, which calculates the total energy of the silicon uh, crystal. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I will first try to run it in uh, with GNU compiled version of uh, quantum espresso. And I will run um, both uh, both serial and uh, parallel computation, and then we will try the uh, the Intel compiled version and both serial and uh, parallel computation. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, if you remember from the slides tutorial, uh, we need pw.x that is the uh, sub program, and we need the input file. We should write the output file. Let's uh, label it as uh, GNU serial because if you don't pass the MPI run uh, before it's basically a serial computation uh, it only uses one core okay and and you may also remember that we have to uh, use a full uh, full path here before the PW.X so it is uh, quantum espresso it depends on where you installed Quantum Espresso, but this is uh, where I do it. And we use the second uh, version, uh, second compiled version, which we compiled using GNU compiler and MPICH uh, parallel computing library. And bing, yeah. So I guess that's all. Let's try. There is a, s a small note, but uh, just ignore that. We see that, uh, yeah. Ah, okay. So there is one one thing that I I made a small mistake. It should be uh, re uh, named out. Yeah, it's just for uh, clarity. It, sh uh, it doesn't really matter w uh, how you name it, but just for clarity, you should uh, name your input file as dot in and output output file as dot out. And we uh, uh, removed. Uh, Move this. Thing. Okay, so now everything is clear. We can say we look into the output file. Okay, start from the beginning. It's a parallel version of um, of the quantum espresso, but it is run running on only one processor. Yeah, this is a serial implementation. And there are some uh, information about the, uh, the the input, the things that that we specify. For example, this twenty Rydberg that is the ECOT WFC, yeah, and the K points here. And uh, now it starts. Uh, you see, th this is kind of interesting. This is a very small calculation, so it only uses three megabytes of RAM, because we only have two point uh, two atoms in the in the unit. So if you have hundreds of atoms, it would be uh, gigabytes or even more so uh, it starts the self-consistent calculation there will be different iterations 
and it will try to minimize the um, uh, estimated SCF accuracy. So you will see uh, this number going down. So this is second iteration, and it goes down to to this, and third iteration goes down. Yeah, and uh, if it reaches the threshold that you defined in the uh, input file, we we keep it default so that we don't really uh, I explicitly define the accuracy um, in, in the current uh, input file. So I if it is lower than the threshold, it will stop the calculation and output the total energy. So this is important, which means the total energy of the system calculated. And uh, this highest occupied level, this is more or less the Fermi, uh, Fermi level, but this is not accurate. Uh, for accuracy, you need to use the uh, uh, NSCF calculation which we will talk about later. So convergence has been achieved in five iterations and uh, you see that the output data file is uh, silicon.safe which is basically the, uh, the the file here. Yeah. So this is the more or less the temporary file that uh, uh, that stores all of the wave functions inside. For the output you don't really need it. But if you want to restore the calculation, you need to use the uh, information in this folder. Okay, and then it calculates uh, what is the CPU time and what is the uh, total CPU time. That's 0 0.73 seconds. This is very fast. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, this is done, and then we want to try the parallel computing of a uh, GNU compiler. For that, we need nothing else but to write lampi run minus mp2. It means that we uh, explicitly use the uh, parallel computing and uh, minus mp2 means that we use two cores. If, if you want to use four cores, we ch just change it to four. Yeah. In this case, we just want to use two cores. And then we change the output file so that uh, it doesn't overwrite the previous file. Parallel and C. Okay. And then we check and jig it si.scf.gnu uh, parallel.out. Yeah. So this is the parallel version. And you see that uh, it really uses two processors and everything else is the same and you you can also check that the total energy is the same uh, so so the so basically it, it it runs faster but the um, output should be should be uh, always the same yeah just stop it um, and now let's start the intel compiler so for the imp Intel compiler, we also need to specify the full pass. Uh, in our case, it's here, QE, and our third compilation, that's the Intel compiler, Bing, and PW.x. Okay. And then we want to pass the silicon.scf.in here, and silicon.scf. Uh, now we want to say Intel serial and out yeah uh, probably this will not work because for Intel compiler this lesser uh, this lesser sign does, doesn't really work if you want to pass the, the input file into the code we can try we can try it and it will say that uh, error oh okay so the first thing is that before using the Sorry, I forget. Before using the Intel compiler, you need to source, yeah, because I if you see this kind of error message, error while loading shared libraries, you cannot find a library. That is, that is means that means that you haven't uh, provided the correct path, correct uh, envir environment variable. I've shown that you have uh, you can do it by source, source, um, and then you need to find uh, in your uh, your uh, install directory of Intel. And parallel studio dot and bing ps uh, sh yeah so this is the file uh, this is the directory that I use and source okay and then we run the code again there will be another message another error yeah it, it says input file not opened or empty yeah 
we can also check you see uh, one file that is that is called crash so basically this crash is is a file that if you if if quantum stressor crashes it will create this file usually it contains some uh, contains some useful information and let's just check what's inside it says could not find yeah this is not not very specific but um, but usually you can you can check that and another thing is that you can check this uh, input uh, temp.in but anyhow um, now it it is very clear it says that input file empty this is usually the case if you try to do it using th this lesser lesser sign here with uh, Intel compiler you, you have seen that it works for GNU compiler but it doesn't work with the um, Intel compiler so in this case you need to press uh, to use minus IMP this will work or you can say minus input if you if you want to uh, be more specific this is, this is basically the same thing and uh, this will also work okay and then we check dot scf dot intel serial dot out it runs on one processor processor because we haven't uh, specified MPI run and uh, you see that everything else is the same. Yeah, we get the same result. Okay, if we want to uh, do the parallel computing version, we need to add MPI run as usual uh, minus MP and let's say two, two cores. And we want to change the output file name to parallel so that it doesn't overwrite the previous one. Okay, it's, it's fast, and we say treat it uh, as uh, SDF dot Intel uh, parallel dot out. Okay, now it runs on two processors, and uh, everything is the same. Still minus fifteen point eight four five. So yeah. Um, I think I think that's the end of this uh, tutorial. Um, I will post uh, everything in the, in the in the GitHub so that you can also check um, check the input file and check the reference output file whether you can get the same uh, result or not. Okay, so uh, I thank you for watching. If you like this video, if you uh, learn something from from this video, I appreciate that you could uh, uh, show your support by clicking like or subscribe okay um, I thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time